Now that you have a better idea of what blockchain technology is, let's talk about the different types of blockchain networks that exist. The primary types of blockchains are public, private, and hybrid. Now let me go into each one and discuss the differences. First up is public blockchains. These are open to anyone to join the network and take part. Once participants join the network, they are immediately able to make transactions. They can act as a merchant, a buyer, be a miner, developer, or just a community member. With public blockchains, all transactions that happen are completely transparent. So anyone, even someone not part of the network, can see transactions from the beginning of time. Public blockchains include the popular cryptocurrencies Bitcoin and Ethereum. Today, the majority of blockchain networks around are public. Here are a few more things you should know about public blockchains. They are 100% decentralized, which means that no individual or group manages the network and who can participate or what and how transactions happen. There is essentially no one in charge. And when joining the network, everyone gets a copy of the blockchain in its entire history. As transactions are happening, their blockchain copy continues to be updated. Everyone in a blockchain network must abide by the network's built-in rules. The network enforces the rules through consensus algorithms and with the help of network participants to verify activity. Public blockchains incentivize participants by providing them with rewards for verifying transactions and mining new blocks. Miners receive rewards for each new block to incentivize them for making the network more secure. Data and identity are secured by advanced cryptographic methods. The networks are also censorship resistant, meaning that the way the network is designed in this decentralized and distributed way, no government authority can shut the network down. And lastly, public networks are more accessible than traditional banks since you can participate in the network from anywhere and access it simply from a computer, laptop, or phone. This provides a much farther reach that doesn't discriminate against where someone lives or even what they look like. Now let us talk about private blockchains. Like you might imagine from the name, private blockchains require that members are invited to participate and have permissions which might provide members different levels of access. Private blockchains are databases that exist in an isolated environment with limited access. This type of blockchain is mostly used by large companies and enterprises that want more control of their network. Examples of private blockchains are Hyperledger and R3 Corda. Hyperledger is an open source community focusing on developing a suite of tools for enterprise level blockchain deployment. Hyperledger Fabric is like Bitcoin blockchain, but it is a private network and information sharing is done through permissions. R3 is an enterprise blockchain technology company. It leads hundreds of companies working together to build distributed applications on top of Corda, known as Cordapps. And here is a bit more information about private blockchains. They are valuable for enterprises and multiple parties that need to work together to conduct business. However, they cannot share sensitive business data on a public blockchain network, where public blockchains might have millions of users who can anonymously make transactions. Private blockchains are much smaller and everyone on the network can be identified. That takes away the anonymity of transactions and creates much more trust in the network. These blockchains are more centralized since there are individuals who manage who can participate in the network and what they can do. Only some members can make transactions while others can only view transactions. And the administrators of the blockchain can add or modify data or change the rules of how to participate. Permissions for each member are agreed upon in advance before joining the network. By limiting the number of participants, private blockchains are much faster than public blockchains and achieve better scalability and processing speed. Lastly, a private blockchain may or may not have a token or currency involved with the chain and do not incentivize members to participate or provide members with a reward for things like mining. A private blockchain might often be referred to as a consortium blockchain. A consortium means that there is a group who governs or manages the blockchain rather than a single entity who might run the private blockchain. Consortium blockchains might include banks, governments, or supply chain companies. And finally, let's talk about hybrid blockchains. Hybrid blockchains are really a mix between public and private. 
This allows the blockchain to have some private data and some public data. Hybrid blockchains combine the benefits of both of the blockchain types while trying to limit the disadvantages and optimize the process. A good example of a hybrid blockchain is Ripple. Ripple enables banks, payment providers, digital asset exchanges, and corporations to send money globally using blockchain technology. Ripple has been criticized for its centralized nodes, which can decide which transactions won in the case of a dispute. But adding a public blockchain to verify the transactions of its private blockchain can make the network much more secure for everyone. Any large group or organization can take on a hybrid model to provide read-only access to their customers and write access internally into suppliers to improve transparency of processes. Innovative companies will think of solutions that fit both public and private blockchains in their operational model and make it more effective. However, the hybrid blockchain model is a complex solution and it is not for everyone. Depending on the scenario, you might find that one of these models works best for you and your business. Keep these differences in mind as you learn more about blockchain and think about creating your own networks.